I was thinking there. This is gonna. You guys are gonna hate me, but I was waiting for something more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I could tell. You because, could tell. <laughs> so the. You guys, I don't think have that close of a connection to Sirius like a lot of other people did. Yeah, so when I these chapters happened and Sirius ends up dying, some people, cry. people couldn't make it through the end of this book because it was so tragic. Uh, oh, okay. And you guys like Sirius, but you're not like obsessed with Sirius like some people. Yeah, I actually felt bad because I'm like, some people are having a rough time here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like. All right. <laughs> like we're shedding tears on the couch over here. I literally, Jen's like, well, at least it wasn't the kids. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, have a little sympathy for Sirius. Yeah, right. we're over here like, First yeah, thing whatever. that comes out of your mouth. At least it wasn't the kids, which uh, I get. But <laughs> I was like, Come well, because on. I'm raking everyone. Who do I want to keep going through the series? Yeah, and for sure. Sirius just kept getting lower and lower. But think about it. Who else is Harry? Ha- I mean, Harry. Yeah, he has, he has no other one. People. He has. He oh, has right. that's his only but he also real didn't really have argument. Sirius. Like know, Sirius is only in his life for like a, a year hope with Sirius. But in his heart, he yeah. had that connection. I think yeah. because yeah. he was his parents' best friend. Yeah. That was the connection to his yep. parents. Maybe we so didn't think space like out a- the chapters for like months. I would have had a better, <laughs> closer connection to Sirius. <laughs> He's looking at you, Jen. I know. I know <laughs> Jen's looking at me. I'm trying to not meet her in the eyes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I get what you're saying. And I can see it being sad. Yeah. But like that. Yeah. If you want a reaction to other characters dying. Yeah. You'll probably get it. <laughs> So every one of my every friend that I have who's read this for the first time, they have different reactions to those scenes. But one of my friends who read it for the first time, um, Sirius was his favorite character in the entire series. No. And so Whoa. I remember he was reading a part of it, I think, when I was around. And I just was like captivated when he was reading it. So I was just like watching him. And then he was. You watched him read it? Like weeping at the serious part. I didn't think you guys were going to do that. I definitely didn't think Danny was because Danny's like, I wouldn't mind if Sirius died. <laughs> Did I say that in this? No. I think he said something close to it. I, I think probably like, did. Probably yeah, at one on point. <laughs> I probably said that during the yeah. 13 at the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was like, we're going to have all the people, you know, let them go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, but, it is. I mean, we're just in process it. maybe it'll hit yeah. me later. Yeah, and honestly, I was thinking that too because I process through other people's emotions. So yes. seeing mm-hmm. Harry sad, yes. that hurts. That's what I was just about mm-hmm. to say. And and we haven't even seen him really be sad yet because he's been too busy trying to Cruise kill survive. Matrix and like yeah, all this other <laughs> stuff. So yeah, but when he's processing and hurting, then mm-hmm. I'll feel it more. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing. And uh, there were a few lines that you got where Harry's processing through it, but he's at, obviously hasn't processed through any of it. So like. <laughs> At the end of chapter 36, when he goes back to Dumbledore's office and Dumbledore has like 30 minutes with Fudge, you can imagine that's the moment we'll, we'll hope. But you know what? I bet you him. in watching yep. the movie, I would probably tear up because I can mm. go off emotions of like watching yeah. someone. Oh, okay. So if I mm. saw you cry, maybe I would have been different. Like, oh, I mean, my head was down. There is something that people say that that is Radcliffe's best acted scene. And there's a there's a moment behind that where I think his grandmother had died the week before. So it wasn't Whoa. necessarily like he was even acting. It was like oh, all real. pure, like actual emotion that he was going through. That's intense. So it, he he did a good job in that scene. I do, I do want to give him that. Right. Um, so oh, that's where you'll see it. But mm-hmm. you're not gonna capture that on TV. <laughs> or video. Yeah. Someone's saying on the on the stream too. Sirius has a cool wand, which I agree. Oh, oh yeah, there, my we looked that wand. up, right? Yeah. He has a One really time. cool wand. It has like the runes on it and stuff like that. Oh, that's one on of the, the ones I have. Yeah, I think you have I should probably re examine my wands yeah. now that I know people. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Get reacquainted. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you have like a whole stash. Right? I think one of my wands is someone I still don't think we know. Yeah, you still don't know that person. Wow. That was a person that we I've guessed got them on the turned around right on my shelf. I feel like I don't want to look at them. But uh, <laughs> I could at least pull out Sirius's wand now. Well, well. You'll well. meet this guy very soon. Hmm. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny. And Kristen. And this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening. Um, just as a quick note, I was having some mic issues this podcast episode, so just forgive me on some of that stuff. There's, there's times when... Um, 
Danny sometimes seems a little distant. Same thing as Jen. She some, sometimes seems a little distant. And I'm trying to work out some of those issues. I got two new mics for this podcast. So working all that out. Um, sorry for any mic issues that you might hear during this. But thanks again for listening to this podcast. We really appreciate your support. Um, if you want to support us, you can go give us a rating, give us a review. Um, you can also support us on Patreon. We don't really have any extra content that we're putting out at the moment, but that's just a great way. If you really want to support us, that's probably um, the best way you can do that. Um, also, go check us out on subreddit, r slash first time readers. If you want to email us, gmail, uh, first time readers at gmail.com. And then we have a new website that we're going to start throwing up um, some more articles and stuff like that at firsttimereaders.com. But thanks again for listening to this podcast. We really appreciate you guys and we are grateful for our community. We have the best, <laughs> like you guys are making my life so much fun because you guys are just uh, talking on subreddit and just like emailing me and letting me know how much you guys love, love this podcast. And it is, oh, it makes me so happy. Um, so thank you so much for your support and enjoy these chapters of Order of the Phoenix. All right, we're at chapter 35 and 36. We did the live read. Now we're doing the live stream for the discussion for these chapters. This chapter kind of opens up and you see that it's Lucius Malfoy who has this, um, who's the one that wants Harry to give him the prophecy and there's all sorts of Death Eaters around and he goes, he says this line, it's time you learn the difference between life and dreams, Potter, said Malfoy. Now give me the prophecy or we'll start using wands. What are your thoughts? What, yeah, what are your thoughts on this being a prophecy, the weapon being a prophecy? Is that an actual weapon? What do you think is contained in this prophecy? Still, because we don't really know what's in it. I know yeah. I keep belaboring I that question. question. <laughs> <laughs> it's still. SPT'd I'm like, how is it a UVD? weapon? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it feels like the person who holds the prophecy must have the power to change it or control it or break it. But why would Voldemort not want it broken? And it would be good for Harry if it was broken. And mm. why is Dumbledore not sharing it with Harry. I just, I can't figure out why. It, it seems like all the ideas I come up with aren't important enough. I'm like, is this even really the weapon? Or is this just another step to get to the real weapon? But I feel like it must be because Voldemort like focused on this for a long time. He was playing the long game with Harry, trying to get Harry to oh. like come into this room just for this moment. But, but spending weeks to do this, yeah. months even? But I'm important. thinking... Maybe Voldemort, right? He yeah. is not going to get this information from Dumbledore. Dumbledore will eventually tell Harry about this Trelawney because it's to Dumbledore, isn't it? Yeah. Trelawney's prophecy to Dumbledore. to Dumbledore. So he has his information and he is waiting to give Harry this information when it's the right time. So, Voldemort is not going to get that information. <laughs> Sorry. So, is <laughs> the next chapter, is Dumbledore going to give Harry that information? <clears throat> yes, because I'm getting answers. You told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep it. Dang it! Um, I don't know. I'm not maybe. so sure he will, but maybe. I just don't know why did why did Dumbledore not tell Harry? Because yet he's too young, or he's gonna do something dumb because he knows his personality. Let's go with that. Well, he'll definitely do something <laughs> dumb. Um, it's the Harry way. But Dumbledore knows that. Well, maybe or maybe he needed him. to wait until a certain time period to right. tell him. Or maybe he didn't he want to, to ever tell time. him, but he figured, okay, now I have to tell you. Maybe he didn't want to. Maybe it's something negative. Maybe hmm. he can turn evil, but I wasn't going to tell you that until I had to. Yeah, if it's something heavy like, like potential. that, maybe. If you choose this potential. direction, you're going to be evil and turn on all of us. Hmm. Or maybe... We have to find out, are you really connected? So if Voldemort dies, you die too. I also was thinking about <clears throat> prophecies as being like a guarantee. Like no matter what you do, it still is going to happen. But also a prophecy, I wonder if it could be, if this happens, then this will happen. Like could a prophecy be like multi-step? Um, but the way Lucius Malfoy was talking about the prophecy, it sounded like he knows what it is already. And it sounds like, the prophecy is the whole reason yeah, no. that Voldemort tried to kill Harry to begin with. So That's, a yeah. lot of people seem to have a general idea of the prophecy. Um, but maybe there's a detail in the prophecy nobody rumors. knew. Yeah, maybe it was all rumors and they want to know what the real maybe deal is. Maybe someone in the Ministry of Magic that saw this 
being placed in this, um, what is it, Department of Mysteries? Yeah. And they're Death Eater or they're on mm. Voldemort's side. It's like, wait, why is Voldemort's name and Harry's name on this? You need to find this, figure this out. Why didn't Dumbledore just uh, destroy it? Because it why probably... did he say Dark Lord instead of Tom Riddle? It almost feels like it's giving him power. Like the mm. prophecy is yeah, respecting Dumbledore him. Calls him Tom. <laughs> yeah, right. It just feels weird. Like why? Or do we even know it's Voldemort? Could the Dark Lord be something else? It just feels awkward. Maybe that's why he couldn't grab or it Or maybe himself. the Dark Lord is the title and Harry could fulfill it. <sighs> yeah. Know. That would be the Harry evil yeah. technique we don't want to see. <laughs> maybe you can't do Occlumacy. He'll turn into him. Well, he's really not working that hard at it currently. No, and he's look at the doing mess. the complete opposite. It got us all in. Yeah, he's not a great Aquaman, that's for sure. Hmm. All right, here is another longer line that I want to read for you because this is Harry's kind of instigating. And I want to ask you guys the question, is Harry right to be instigating this to an adult wizard who is a bit better than him at magic? He says, so, said Harry, what kind of prophecy are we talking about here anyway? He could not think about what to do, but he kept talking. Neville's arm was pressed against his, and he could feel him shaking. He could feel one of the others quicken breath on uh, on the back of his head. He was hoping they were all thinking hard about ways to get out of this, because his mind was blank. What kind of prophecy, repeated Bellatrix, the grin fading from her face. You jest, Harry Potter. Nope, not jesting, said Harry, his eyes flicking from death eater to death eater. Looking for a weak link, a space through which they could, could escape. How come Voldemort wants it? Several of the death eaters let out low hisses. Sorry, I got indigestion right now from dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you dare speak his name, whispered Bellatrix. Yes, said Harry Pot, or yes, yeah, said Harry, maintaining his tight grip on the glass ball, expecting another attempt to bewitch it from him. Yeah, I've got no problem with saying, Volt, shut your mouth, Bellatrix streaked. <laughs> you dare speak his name with your unworthy lips. You dare besmirch it with your half-blood tongue. You dare, did you know he's half-blood too, said Harry recklessly. Hermione gave a little moan in his ear. Voldemort, yeah, his mother was a witch and his dad was a mung- muggle. Or has he been telling you lot, he's pure blood. <laughs> Is Harry smart to be instigating this kind of stuff? I don't know, but maybe. I uh, this was his so smartest little... move at the end. Mm. What do you think? No, I thought it, well, he, you go, bleh, exactly what I'm doing, rambling. <laughs> and you want to waste time. So I thought yeah. it was great. And he's instigating him. Because I think sometimes they do... St- they'll do something stupid out of anger, like something quick that wasn't on the mm-hmm. plan. So like, why not kind of sh- stir that in them to maybe go off the plan and it, it kind of ruins, turns into chaos. Because mm-hmm. they don't have a plan. They are outnumbered. They're doomed. And yeah. the more you talk, the more info you can get out of them. Mm-hmm. And, and teasing, no, just like teasing more information. Like Harry knows stuff they might not know. Make mm-hmm. them intrigued. It's smart, but at the cost of his friends, possibly. I know that's a, yeah. that yep. would, like it's risking all of them. So I just don't know right how he part. could get out of it. I'm like, it feels pretty messy. Yeah, and he is instigating also just to give his friends more time. And I feel like he's almost instigating so Hermione can have more time to think. I feel like <laughs> Hermione is the big factor in this. Hmm. Um, well, she's the smartest. Yeah. I know, exactly. Mm-hmm. He's like waiting for her to come up with an idea. idea. <laughs> and then this is what happens um, with Malfoy. She was right too, by the way. So, of course, I he's know, going to listen I know. to her yep. more now, I think. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think she did really good writing too of like Harry just wanting to... He was like so regretful that he went into there and he, he was just like rash and did that. Mm-hmm. And immediately, he just wants to get everyone out alive and he's doing whatever he can to get everyone out alive. Um, but... Malfoy goes, Dumbledore never told you the reason you bear that scar was hidden in the bowels of the Department of Mysteries. Why didn't Dumbledore tell Harry? Why didn't he tell him the prophecy originally? We just kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he tell him about the prophecy? Your turn. I rambled on before. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't rambling. I always ramble. Um, I don't know. I, I think it was for Harry's own good, though. And I'm wondering if if there is more of a connection, the Harry-Voldemort thing. Harry knowing the prophecy might have put him farther down a dark road. 
Maybe. Hmm. Because isn't it like, wasn't that in Star Wars where they told him he was going to be <clears throat> evil? And he's like, no, I'm never going to be. And then he slowly hmm. took... These sound no, like things mind. that are close to Star Wars things. <laughs> when he was young, or Attican, flying uh, around. Never mind. Anakin, the chosen one. <laughs> Forget it. To restore balance to the Force. <laughs> we'll do those next. Yep. I guess we'll see, Jen. <laughs> yeah, you, we can't tell you anything about those yet. <laughs> I've watched all of them, so I know. <laughs> well, I don't apparently, I don't, because he's saying I'm wrong, so. <laughs> um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been too long, maybe. I'm going to find um, it and play it for But you. I don't know. I don't know what... Um, I don't know what the deal is. Because Dumbledore Harry, doesn't want Harry knowing this stuff yeah. yet. And Harry looks at this thing almost longingly. He says, Harry mm. stared into the eye, the slit-eyed holes through which Malfoy, Malfoy's gray eyes were gleaming. Was this prophecy the reason Harry's parents had died? The reason he carried his lightning bolt scar? Was it the answer... Um, was the answer to all of this clutched in his hand. So, Because we were trying, this is, maybe we're going to get the answers, what we were asking, like, why were they after the Potters to begin with, Voldemort? And why was, so maybe that's what, It's what's never in mind. Hand. We were kind of just. But then Voldemort obvious. knows that, so that's a good theory. Why is, is still is Voldemort after this? Because Voldemort knows why he went after the Potters, right? Right. He knew enough to go after them to yeah. begin with. Yeah, but maybe it's like he couldn't remember what would happen. Or did they change? Can the prophecies in those little globes, whatever, orbs mm. change? That's why they're either brighter or duller, maybe? <laughs> because maybe that's what it is. Maybe like as time goes on, okay, Harry lived. And that's why his name appeared with a mm. question mark. Or maybe there was a question mark because they weren't sure if he was going to die or live. So there's going to be... Voldemort is going to try to kill some... Well, will he survive? Question mark. Hmm. And now he needs to know who's going to have more power, stronger. Hmm. Yeah. Who's going to be the lord of control. Or if he knows power. the prophecy, but he wants to be able to use it as his gauge because it's dull currently. So maybe he can look at it, see when it gets brighter or not, and that will be the power. But why would that be like the weapon? And they keep calling it a weapon, but nothing about it feels weapony yet. But maybe it's just like information, which is a weapon. Yeah, I guess it can be <laughs> lame weapon, but a weapon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I have been waiting to also bring this point up for a long time because this is the line that we get and I want to ask you guys what oh, is going boy. on here. A jet of red light flew o right over the Death Eater's shoulders and hit a glass fronted cabinet on the wall full of variously shaped hourglasses. The cabinet fell to the floor and burst apart, <clears throat> glass flying everywhere, sprang back up on the wall, fully mended, then fell down again and shattered. What is happening there? Oh, Danny had a good theory. Kind of. But it doesn't fully make sense. Why? It's, well, it's something with time, sure. But why would it fall and then just appear at the top again? Like, its breakingness made it just appear back put together? Like, that doesn't feel like quite But it's how coming a time back together works. and going back up. Right? It's like coming together and going back up? Or yeah. It's or it just disappears and comes back. No, it's you're just watching it fall. Harry break. sees this thing happening again when he goes back through the room and he, he says it's something. Do you remember what he said it was? No. It was the time turners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is obvious one. Yeah. <laughs> so what is happening? Are, are these time turners going back in they time? Turn. They're turning. <laughs> they break and then it's like that didn't happen. And then it breaks mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Right? Is that what you're trying to yeah. get at? Yep. <laughs> so all I'm trying to get at, this is a, almost an outside of the story thing. When she started the third book, she realized she opened too big of a wormhole with time travel. And so she had to close it. <laughs> this is her So she has a, a, jet of red light, red, a jet of red light fly out and destroy <laughs> the time turners. The time turners are now destroyed. They're, That's what this little sentence yeah. is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. With that, she closed the loop of time travel. 
I didn't even catch but, it. I know. <laughs> like, I didn't the first time that I read it either. And I was like, people started saying, uh, asking her the questions of what this was. And she was like, oh, I had to close the loop for time travel. And that's how I did it. And they're but like, but what red light like and from where? Well, one the was on loan to Hermione. So how do we know more on, <laughs> yeah, on loan out sure. there? I know. That's an interesting mm. question. <laughs> Yikes. There's one out there that I got to get back. Yep. Because I, I <laughs> was thinking it would be something yeah. more. But that, that, that'd that be nice and simple. Button it up, you know? They're well, gone. that's what she had to do. But I don't believe mm. it. I was thinking something larger of like, it started another timeline right here. Mm. When it fell, there was a little burst of explosion. And then at some point, they're going to leave. And then it's going to bring them back in time or something. Harry Potter Wait, where did this red light come from, though? <laughs> a death? I'm so confused. Um, <laughs> who had the red was, light? It was when they were running. So at that point, I think yeah, it someone was just had cast Hermione, a spell. Them. Neville, and Harry stupefied. were like running around. And then I don't know if Baby Face guy was yeah. still Death bumbling either? around. And they were like, no, trying Neville, to kill people. I think Neville was the one. Uh, <clears throat> was he the one that cast a spell? I think he was the one that cast a spell and destroyed it. Oh, but there's whoa. only one. So like that is the one time traveler that all the little time travelers are connected to. Mm-hmm. And. No, it's like a cabinet full of time turners. But that's what I'm saying. That is where the ministry keeps the time turners. But how do they know one didn't like the Animagus? They have a whole list of who's... I know. There might be some out there. Mm. Mm. This is another interesting point. So um, this is like we didn't get too many more rooms. We didn't really see any other rooms. But um, I thought this was a really fascinating point. And this is something that I picked up more on this read. Do you guys understand what the Department of Mysteries is? It's like protecting things that yeah, shouldn't I don't be know. used. Okay. That, that's the vibe I'm like. getting too. I'm like, these are not mysteries. These are things that they seem to know what they are. And it's all just a guise to keep it a secret. Yeah. Because like, it feels like they kind of know what everything is. The prophecies, these are organized rows. They're labeled. The time turners are in a cabinet. It, it just doesn't feel like these are mysteries. It feels like it's just more like top secret stuff. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I didn't. And we don't know what the brains are, or like some of the other things they mentioned. Or the doesn't mean that they don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it gives me a vibe lab. that they know what's up. <laughs> okay, here's here's the side question that I want to ask for you guys. In the non magical world, what are the mysteries of life? The mysteries of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the what mysteries of life? <laughs> I'm like, oh my! Like, are these like official mysteries? Like, ah, oh, the seven mysteries of the no, world. No, there's or not like, the seven well, mysteries okay. of the world. Just, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know these. I don't think. <laughs> what are certain things what that are mysterious things? about life? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you, what did you say? You said love. I said, what is love? Um, Some people, yeah. Okay. That's what I would have said too. Mm-hmm. That one's like a weird. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there are other mysteries, but <laughs> mysteries of life feel more profound. The mysteries of life. Like a big question is, what is life? Uh, okay, there you go. Um, where did I come is, from? Where am I going? Mm-hmm. Where did they come from? Where did they go? <laughs> like the where did they come, come from? from? Come <laughs> uh, okay, like Wes just ripped one, by the <laughs> oh, way. I did. Oh, yeah. I'm that, glad. Is, that smells like egg. Yeah, Ooh. I had it over Keep here. It there. I, over there. That I is thought atrocious. it was someone, so I didn't want to <laughs> That is a mystery of life right there. <laughs> we can blame Wes for all of it <laughs> yeah. all the same, so. Um, okay, like a mystery of life. And death is a mystery. Right. We don't really mm-hmm. know about that. And so is birth. Time. What? Birth is too. Yeah, when you're for being sure. born, you don't. Yep. Know. Time is a mystery. <clears throat> Time. Oh. Such a mystery. The world like travels around. They say it's around. different. Yeah. Thought is different a mystery, places. right? Thought. Yeah. Thought. I like guess, what is yeah. going on through someone's mind, or like the power of thoughts that like is sentience. mysterious. Yeah. But like, does anything weird. outside of my own yeah. mind even exist? Mm-hmm. Is anything real? It's exactly. Tank. Make Your mind's a tank. <laughs> am I one of the white <laughs> brains in a I tank? Am. <laughs> oh my. Like, so those are mysteries. Another room that they went in that we didn't really see was uh, Ginny, Neville, and no, Ginny, Ron, and Luna. Are you saying each of these are a witch form? Interesting. The future is huh. a mystery. They, Death they is a mystery. went into the space Time room. Is a mystery. Like, space. Hmm. Like, space. Hmm. So there are these things that are like, Beyond our understanding, and I think what the Department of Mysteries is doing is it's looking into these things. They have a time room. They're looking into time and trying to figure out the mysteries of time, which is like the deeper forms of magic. And the reason why I I think this, too, is because who paused at each of the rooms and was more intrigued by some of these rooms? Hermione was intrigued by which room? Do you remember? No. The brain room, the thought room. She wanted to stay in there for a long period of time Mm. and like just 
be mesmerized by it because she wants to know all the mysteries of the mind. She is brainiac. Mm -hmm. Ginny stopped during the time room. My theory is because she wants to take back time and go back to her first year when she was possessed by Lord Voldemort. Harry wanted to stop at the room of death because all he wants is to get back to people that he loves. That is the only thing that he wants. And he wanted to stand in front of that archway forever. He was like drawn to it. Same mm. as Luna, the same as Neville. They mm. were kind of drawn to that room. Yep. So these characters oh, were drawn to the things. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm. And it was funny when I asked you that little experiment. I was re-listening to the podcast, uh, last one, and you guys a- answered what room you would want to be in. And I think you didn't want to do the mind room at all. You're like, I don't want to even touch that. <laughs> like, That's gross to me. You wanted to do the mind room. Yeah. You want to know what's what's going on in people's <laughs> minds yeah. and thoughts. And I you guys didn't want anything to do with the death rooms at all. I think you wanted to do time room you wanted to do the time room you too definitely sounds mm-hmm. right so i feel like it's such an interesting thing mm. so like the ministry and this is another reason why i love the books i'm talking too much but it's <laughs> the idea that like the deeper forms of magic are things that muggles can participate yeah. in. yeah like time we are still looking into the mysteries of these things i like that and i just love that like like us muggles can participate in the magical world in small ways like we mm. are going through time there's magic right. to time there's magic to space there's magic to your thoughts there's magic to death even though that sounds weird there's magic to love people think there's a love room they're, they're, they're number like nine. Oh, yeah, because there were 12, 12 rooms. <laughs> room number nine. Yeah, so there's 12 rooms. Well, one's the exit, so yeah. 11 rooms of mystery. But then all mm. you had to say is, I want out, and it would open the correct door. Or was that pure yeah. luck? I think like that But it would have been crazy. Trick. Yeah, like if you knew the names to each of the room, you could just be like, love room, time room, mm. death room, and it might just like spin <laughs> right to it. But they didn't think that. They also didn't know the names of anything. Right to the love room. Or broom. Yeah, don't go to the love room. That's weird. I feel like I don't know what goes on in there. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, PG, come on. I can't even do the middle finger. (laughs) (laughs) Now we know what this is. I'm going to piss us off. What? You're not going to know. What is it? (laughs) I'm going to rewatch the stream to see what you Yeah, nice. (laughs) Oh, shoot. It's documented. It's all documented. He won't remember. <laughs> did you think, did you guys think Hermione is dead or do you think that Hermione might be dead? <laughs> because of these, this huh. line, when, when it initially happened, did you, did you think that she was dead? Yeah, we know he, that she's not dead. He'd rather have her dead <laughs> <than> serious. <laughs> serious. So. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Much, at, uh, maybe not much, but um, when the line goes, but the Death Eater, Hermione had just struck dumb, made a sudden splashing movement with his wand. A streak of what looked like pure flame, pure purple flame, passed right across Hermione's chest. She gave a tiny, oh, as a thought of surprise, as though of surprise, and crumbled onto the floor where she lay motionless. What kind of magic is that, too? It's crazy magic. That's what this is. Purple magic? Purple. Royal. (laughs) Silent. royal magic. Wand whisping magic. magic. Hmm. I don't know. It's weird. I don't think Purple she's dead, flame. but I feel like she's pretty stunned or whatever. They're going to have to take her to that Mungo's. Hot- St. Mungo's? Yeah. The- Maybe. Mm. Hopefully her brain's intact. Yeah, I know. Seriously. That's all we care I'm about. I'm like more worried about Ron, honestly. I feel like whatever Hermione was dealing with is. <laughs> he was on know. like laughing gas. <laughs> yeah, 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 on laughing gas, getting high, getting attacked by brains. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> oh, I love that Ron. his little line of, we saw Uranus, Harry. <laughs> and he's <laughs> laughing. <That's> so good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And then he had the other, or the, there was the other line that they blew up Pluto. That was weird. That was I was so like, funny. You're like, are there consequences to this? <laughs> Gosh. Like that was the Real. year Pluto is no longer a planet. <laughs> it might have been. I got to check that out. They were just covering it for us muggles. They're like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's not a planet anymore. It just doesn't exist. It blew up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you think of this line too? Where it says, Neville kicked aside the broken fragments of his own wand and they walked slowly toward the door. My grand's going to kill me, said mm. Neville thickly, blood splattering from his nose as he spoke. That was my uh, my dad's old bond. <laughs> nice. Commit. That was Nailed my it. dad's old bond. <laughs> Interesting. That was great. For a number of reasons. Hmm. Because did it choose him? No. Maybe. Yeah, so what's the difference between a hand-me-down wand and then a... Uh... Can you just hand a wand one? down or does it have to want to be handed down? But then down? didn't Ron hmm. Weasley get gifted a new wand? 
Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like he was yeah, chosen. Third year, yeah. So what's the difference? I don't know. I don't think everyone believes wholeheartedly in the wand choosing the wizard. Even the Weasleys. It seems like they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, hand me down, cheap wands, whatever. We'll yeah. pick you one up. It'll be fine. But then I feel like maybe in normal life it doesn't come up that much. But like when you're really fighting for your life or fighting the Dark Lord, it would matter if the wand chose you. But most wizards never are put in the position where that like little difference would matter. Mm. But I don't know, because this wand I don't think chose Neville. But now he can go to Ollivander and get a wand that can really choose him. So is Neville going to be incredible in the next book? Right, and I'm like, what if it, him? yeah, it was just not a good wand. And his father's still alive, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's so not you like... you think it's attached to the dad, even Maybe, though? like, if mm-hmm. someone dies, that's different. But if somebody's, like, still alive and then you're using their wand, I'm like, that feels, like, weird. Mm-hmm. Um like, I don't know if a wand would be truly loyal to someone if their original owner was still alive. That feels... If a wand has a choice, or maybe wands are a little more, like, weird, and <laughs> the wands were like, yo, this dude's not fully with it mentally. Let's let's jump ship. It's time to head over to Neville. Yeah. But that feels lame and disloyal, too. So get that wand but out like of here But, like, when it breaks, is it like a puff of smoke that comes out? Like, all the magic? Gone. It's final breath. Mm. Like you saw in the prophecy when there's a little puff of someone speaking and it's gone. I yeah, wand breaking I still think is a big deal. Like I was thinking one of my like random theories was it was, I forget. No, no. Uh, I was thinking Dumbledore turned around from London when um, Ron's wand broke, but it actually wasn't that. It was <coughs> the previous book when that happened. Sorry. But Umbridge could still be alive if her wand broke and that sent a signal to the ministry. And it was right after Neville's wand broke that all the people came in to rescue them. So I was trying to play with that idea of if oh, the wand like breaking. GPS. If it like just if people that are really in tune with magic or were meditating or whatever, if they could pick up on that. Um, a little ripple hmm. from a broken wand. Yeah. But nah, it doesn't really line up like I thought it did. Man. But I feel bad for Neville all the same. Yeah. People are asking questions too that I can't quite say in the stream, but they're such good questions. <laughs> oh, they're so good. You guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they're just like, like a tad too thing. far ahead. I know. Mm. It's like just a little bit too far ahead. Oh. Mm. Great questions, guys. Copy paste. <laughs> I know. I, just gotta, <laughs> I know. I got to like archive all this stuff. Mm. Um, this is another line though. And I, this is going to be my proof. I have a lot of lines that I'm going to read because there's so many good lines in this. Yeah. There's like, oh, there's so many good ones. This is the reason why I love Neville so much. <laughs> like Jen's coming up with theories last podcast of why I love him so much. But this is really one of the I reasons. <laughs> Potter, you're a racist <laughs> run. Draw, draw Lucius Malfoy pulling off his, ma- oh. his mask. Now hand me the prophecy like a good boy. Let, let the others go and I'll give it to you, said Harry desperately. A few of the Death Eaters laughed. You are not in a position to bargain, Potter, said Lucius Malfoy, his pale face flushed with pleasure. You see, there are ten of us and only one of you. Or hasn't Dumbledore ever taught you how to count? He's not alone, shouted a voice from above. Yes. He's still got B. <laughs> oh, Neville. That is why I love Neville That's so, so cute. much. His character so arc is so bad, good. though. Yeah. But yes, it was so cute. I know. So loyal. He's, I know. And he's know supporting Harry this whole time. He character. keeps saying, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. Even when he's about to be tortured. Yeah. He gets tortured and oh he's still my like, goodness. Harry, don't give it to him. This, he this is so kid's, brave. Uh, like for what his parents went through and for how scared he should just be of normal life. And <laughs> yeah, how far he comes is so beautiful. <laughs> I love him so much. Don't cry. He's going to get my hot tamale award. <laughs> <laughs> Babe city. <laughs> um, another few really interesting lines that I want to talk about. It says, Harry did not have a chance to think. There was no choice. The prophecy was hot with the heat of his clutching hand as he held it out. Malfoy jumped forward to take it. Then, high above them, two more doors burst open and five more people sprinted into the room. Sirius, Lupin, Moody, Tonks, and Kingsley. Harry, take the prophecy, grab Neville, and run, Sirius yelled, dashing to meet uh, Bellatrix. Harry did not see what happened next. Kingsley swayed across um, his field of vision, battling with the pockmarked 
The park marked no longer masked Rookwood. Another jet of green light flew over Harry's head as he launched himself toward Neville. What are your guys' just general thoughts on everything? Like, did you like, uh, obviously you liked when all this, the or actual Order of the Phoenix are coming in, right? Mm. That was like a kind of cool little triumphant moment. Yeah. Did you yep. think that everything was going to be solved in this moment? Did, were you like a breath of fresh air? Oh, okay. They're going to fix everything. I still thought of them as being outnumbered. Mm. I thought of at that point, the kids became a liability because you could hold them hostage. Mm -hmm. So it still felt like chaos to me. I was like, this is a volatile situation still, but much better than it was a few mm. seconds before. So it was still a relief, but I definitely did not think of it as being over. Mm. I did. Yeah. You were like, they're here. How they were coming in. Well, cause I said last time I was like, I feel like the kids were doing better than the adults were. I don't know. Mm. I know that's maybe so wrong, but I mean, mad eye moody. He, he was knocked out like immediately. I was not expecting that. Yeah. And then serious. Uh, I too cocky. Well, yeah, I don't like. I think that's probably why I don't like him that much <laughs> as a character. When he, yeah, um, that side shows. And then Lupin, I was like, he's great. He'll be helpful. Tonks, I know, is young, but she got where she is because she's good. Mm -hmm. And who was it, Kingsley? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just felt solid. like I, I thought that they would know their tricks better. I know it's like a battle, but mm. like you kind of already know them because you've been studying them. Like last time this happened, you knew all these characters that, mm. and they were released from Azkaban. So like we knew what they did. So this is how we're going to battle them next yeah. time. Yeah. I mm. guess that's my thoughts. I feel like you see different kinds of magic when the adults come on. Like they're actually doing stuff that is a bit more interesting. When the kids come on, because we're <laughs> learning with the kids, you like know they're they're gonna do like Expelliarmus, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, Protego, Stupefy, like Stupefy, and a few others. Yep, like the ones that Harry essentially taught them. And then the adults come in, and they're doing ones that are pretty cool. And then when Dumbledore comes on and he's battling Tom, that's when you're seeing stuff that is, that was like the coolest duel scene. You're like, mm -hmm. what? They're doing insane stuff at this moment. So the magic feels like it's progressing, which is kind of cool. But here's some more lines that I'm going to read for you. I'm pretty much just reading this whole chapter. <laughs> there's some there's uh, some longer lines here. Um, I'm not going to read the line with the prophecy. Uh, let me just read it. Who cares? He gave another stupendous heave and Neville's robes tore all along the left seam. The small spun glass dropped um, from his pocket. And before either of them could catch it, one of Neville's floundering feet kicked it. It flew some 10 feet to the right and smashed on the step beneath them. As both of them stared at the place where it had broken, appalled at what had happened, a pearly white figure with hugely magnified eyes rose into the air, unnoticed by any of them. But Harry could see its mouth moving. But in all the crashes and screams and yells surrounding them, not one word of the prophecy could he hear. The figure stopped speaking and dissolved into nothingness. And later, almost right after this, Harry turned to look where Neville was staring. Directly above them, framed in the doorway from the brain room, stood Albus Dumbledore his wand aloft, his face white and furious. Harry felt a kind of electric surge charge through every particle of his body. They were saved. <laughs> Did you feel that the same? Did you feel like, like as soon as he was here, you're saved? Yeah, then I was like, all right, good. It's going <laughs> to be good. good. Well, yeah, because he's the only one that Voldemort's afraid of, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As for the next chapter, which <laughs> starts right which there. Which we knew before, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's the only one that, yeah, that Tom Riddle ever feel it, feared, that Voldemort ever feared. But it is so, this is an entrance. This is a good entrance, though. I love that the Death Eaters ran. Yeah. <laughs> they were, like, terrified as soon as they saw him. Oh, yeah, that was They good. just knew. At this moment, when you guys were listening and reading, did you think that Voldemort was going to come back? That he was going to be in the... Nope. So did you think the battle was over at this point, pretty much, because Dumbledore showed up? I thought the battle was over, and I... I was thinking there would be a little bit of a moment with Bellatrix or with some final showdown of information. Okay. But I didn't think it was going to be like that um, with her actually escaping. It still feels a little bit weird. Like if they were paying more attention, they could have stopped her from escaping. Yeah. I know. I, I was like, and no one's following Harry. <laughs> yeah. Like Harry's able huh? to go chase her, but nobody else. But then it almost felt to me like Dumbledore wanted that to happen. Like it almost mm -hmm. needed to happen. I don't know why. Um, because I thought if Dumbledore wanted her 
captured there, she would have been. That's how it felt to me in the moment. So do you think Dumbledore kind of like let Harry go and do this? No. Yeah, kind of. Hmm. I don't know exactly why, but yeah, it it did feel that way in the moment. Um, Not like, it's not like I thought all of that out, but just subconsciously, that's how it felt. It felt like, like Dumbledore was holding back a little bit. Like, for example, it's way easier for Dumbledore to come in and just be like, dead, 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 dead. That's it. But he's not. He's restrained all of these people which and restrained himself to not just come in guns blazing mm. um it's way harder to catch someone alive instead of dead so he's like i think made a choice to be to hold back a little bit and that it felt that way when bellatrix escaped because if dumbledore wanted to he could have done something closer to what he did escaping his office mm. where everyone just gets knocked out in a split second nobody even knows what happened um I feel like he could have done something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think there there might be something to Harry chasing Bellatrix down or, like, mm. something about Harry's personal journey here. Or he wanted Maybe. him to feel like revenge in a way. Mm. Maybe. But then he did the illegal curse. Yeah. But you have to believe it. So I now know. we learn something about Harry. I know. Yeah. He doesn't really, yeah, and maybe Dumbledore let him go because he needed, he knew Harry wasn't going to feel this, and he maybe he needed him to know that on his own, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> this is the last long line that I want to read for you guys, because this is pretty much the end of the, like, the last page of the last chapter. And then, um, I just want your thoughts on this, even though you don't really love serious all that much mm. <laughs> this is the, no, the whole that thing sounds so bad <laughs> you guys are so glad that he died no. <laughs> <laughs> our room divided <laughs> <coughs> only one pair was still battling apparently unaware of the new arrival harry saw Sirius duck bellatrix's jet of red light he was laughing at her come on you can do better than that he yelled his voice echoing around the cavernous room The second jet of red light hit him squarely in the chest. The laughter had not quite died from his face, but his eyes widened in shock. (sighs) Harry released Neville, though he was unaware of doing so. He was jumping down the steps again, pulling out his wand as Dumbledore, too, turned turned toward the dais. It seemed to take Sirius an age to fall. His body curved in a graceful arc as he sank backwards through the ragged ragged veil hanging from the arch. Harry saw the look of mingled fear and surprise on his godfather's wasted, once handsome face as he fell through the ancient doorway and disappeared behind the veil, which fluttered for a moment as though in a high wind, then fell back into place. Harry heard Bellatrix Lestrange's triumphant scream, but knew it meant nothing. Sirius had only just fallen through the archway. He would reappear from the other side any second, but Sirius did not reappear. Sirius, Harry yelled, Sirius! He had reached the floor, his breath coming in searing gasps. Sirius must just be behind the curtain. He, Harry, would pull him back out. But as he reached the ground and sprinted toward the dais, Lupin grabbed Harry around the chest, holding him back. There's nothing you can do, Harry. Get him. Save him. He's only just gone through. It's too late, Harry. We can still reach him. Harry struggled hard and viciously, but Lupin would not let go. There's nothing you can do, Harry. Nothing. He's gone. You guys don't even love series. No, it was, it was more sad listening to you read it than the first time. Yeah. Yeah. What are your guys' thoughts on Sirius and his death, though? I'm, But I'm mad at him because, like, if he was yeah. focused and not saying, like, that's the best you can do, maybe he could have been on guard better. I don't know. Obviously, yeah. it was meant to be. Seriously. It does feel like it was a little bit of arrogance in the end that, that did him in. A little. Pride was his downfall for sure. His yeah. Arrogance. yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't like that that's his last moment either. That's a little heartbreaking. And then yeah. like here when you were reading like his face expression, I don't think I really caught it mm-hmm. the first go around. Yeah. Well, it won't be his last, last moment because Harry's going to get back and open up his little present and have a beautiful, loving thing from Sirius. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, I still don't know what the present is. I thought it was a communication thing, but now I'm thinking it'll be at the least something that'll make Sirius feel closer. I don't know what that is, but something. That'll be the heartwarming end, maybe. 
Because hmm. it hasn't come back yet. That would make sense. Maybe it'll be a, a portrait of Sirius that Sirius has been carrying around in his wallet, like, talking to for whenever. years so that the, it's like him. Aww. And then it could give him advice. That'd be a little weird, but cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. And then I was like, was it better that he died this way or like Harry's vision? Would that have been better if he died that way? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Because to me, I think the Voldemort one would have been like, this seems bad. Like it's a family <laughs> that yeah. killed mm. him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, and seriously? Voldemort is like the Dark Lord, so I'm like, okay, that seems acceptable. Yeah, at least went out to the best person. This is like, um, and what happens to uh, Twelve Grimald Place now? Now that Sirius is no longer around, does it just become the Bellatrix right. house now? Mm. It feels Ooh. like I didn't even think of that. A lot of interesting things are going to happen now. Yeah. And then someone even put through this question up in chat that I I think is interesting. What happens? Did Sirius die before he went through the veil? Or is the veil what killed him? It seemed like he was dying as he fell through the veil. Mm. So, so the veil was just both. like, what is the veil? Um, Death. Hell. Mm. Heaven. I don't know. <laughs> the, the afterlife. Like the passage from life to death, pretty much. Maybe. It seems like it, mm. kind of. Weren't there voices there, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe he can still talk to Sirius. Hmm. Wow, Through that'd be interesting arch. if he still could. Well, because Harry felt like he kind of heard voices from the other side of the arch. Whose voice do you remember him hearing? Maybe his parents. He no, thought he heard Ron. <laughs> so just as a quick side note for some of this. Hmm. In between this book and the, the last two, one of the biggest fan theories is that Ron is going to die because Harry heard Ron's voice on the other side. Whoa. So this is, I mean... I usually don't know if Ron's going to die or not. I'm not, this, I'm not spoiling anything, but one of the biggest theories was that he is going to die in the next series. That is or in the very next interesting. But that would heard. mean death plus seeing the future a little bit. Yeah. Which sure. is interesting. Yeah. But what did Harry hear then? If it's not future Ron, someone who sounds like Ron. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Another Weasley that's going to die. <laughs> Percy. Mm. But it, can mm. it see the future? Another Weasley who would die, Percy. <laughs> yes, the most acceptable one. <laughs> That's something we can get behind. <laughs> we on the same page for that one? Uh, yeah. I, I'm also like, it's weird that everyone knows what this thing is. Yeah, like, or maybe not everyone, but at least Lupin. It's like, no, he he's gone. There is nothing you can do. Yeah, that's it. Um. I guess that's even more sad because it's not like there's no body. Yeah. Yep. That's probably worse. Yeah. Because then yeah. it kind of well, feels like, like denial of it. You could yep. have. Because there's mm. no physical Do you think body. Harry will experience denial? Do you think he's still going to say like he's, he's just on the other side of the veil throughout the I would, He thing? might figure, try to figure out a way to see if he knows anyone that like, can you? Yeah, maybe. Like Dumbledore, can you get behind the arch? How, mm. how can we retrieve him? Hmm. Possibly. I wouldn't put it past. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me that much. Yeah, well, and we'll talk about this in the next mm. chapter too when he Before goes he back visiting. into the room. Maybe he keeps mm. coming back. Mm. Last sighting of him. He's just got to put him into that, uh, into that um, hummingbird room. You know, take him out at just the right moment. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you guys have anything else in this chapter? Can they go to the time turner room and go back in time? Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, that's what you were saying. Too bad all those time, time turners, turners are broke. broken right now. They're not broken. That's some lie. That's not <laughs> And real. who makes the time turners She's anyway? Like, that's not the ministry. True. I don't so know. The it was like the tiniest sentence. That's like, did you blink and see yeah. that red light? <laughs> it is gone. There are no yeah, time all turners. All of them are gone. <laughs> She closed it enough that like you don't have to think about it that often, but it, yeah. if it came up again, you'd be like, oh, there you was one. You thought about it all the there. time. Well, yeah, because she opened a crazy door. Yeah. And, and it's kind of nice that it's closed right now. Uh, yeah, right? like it's easier to just be like, all right, good, no time turners. But you didn't catch that. Yeah, I didn't. It's very subtle, and mm -hmm. I still can't close the door fully because so, exactly. it could be out there. <laughs> and in a weird way, like she might have closed a door, but she opened other ones too. At least we have a lot more questions now. About what, what all these rooms do and the prophecies open? and this and that. Oh. Like, 
are there consequences to Harry and his friends, uh, like breaking hundreds of prophecies in their escape? Um, I don't know. And all these planets, like what's the planet room for? Like, why did they have a whole room for that? Is it bad to blow up Pluto? And what are these brains? And why are they another thing? <laughs> Is it bad to blow up Pluto? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm also like the things Luna said they were um, breeding. Like, what are those? When's that going to come up? Um, <laughs> what? You, you still think everything that Luna is saying is true, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Luna knows what's up. Now, she's so wacky. I really don't know. I really don't know what to think of her yet. But I, I do think of what she say, says as being true. Yeah. Mm. Has she said anything truly bizarre? Yeah, probably. I'm just, like, looking past it. Um, Yo, so your uh, your theories are that Lu everything Luna says is true. Mine is that everything that Trelawney says is true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering how the prophecy got into that orb, too. Like, Trelawney's giving a real prophecy at some point, and then Dumbledore's like, oh, hold that thought. Let me uh, get ready with an orb. Or is it, like... After the fact, they have to like use some magical thing to put it in an orb. Um, Maybe or Trelawney sees Dumbledore it coming. Dumbledore is like, going to show. Pen. Was it the pensive, pensive, yeah. whatever mm. it is, to Harry, so he could see when Trelawney was telling him before it went into mm. the orb. Oh, I thought you were going somewhere else with that, with like bringing well, the prophecy to a pensive. Well, I thought you could do pensive. that into yeah. I know. Whoa, but Dumbledore was there, so he could actually <laughs> do that for Harry. Yeah, you're right. But he could just tell him to. True. Yeah. But it'd be more fun. <laughs> hmm. We'll get there, guys. We're not in that chapter yet. That's 37. We're All on right. Oh, yes. now. <laughs> I guess You'll we're... read that tonight when you guys go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chapter 36. The only one he ever feared. I don't think we did a summary for the prior one, unfortunately. Like we forgot about that, but ah, uh, yeah. This one. Anybody have a summary for this one? Um, not actually written. Um, but this is Dumbledore battling Voldemort. Yeah, pretty much. With a little bit of Harry Bellatrix action yeah. before. This is a a little bit of Harry processing it. And this is these are the lines that kind of gets me a little um emotional. This is Lupin dragged Harry mm. away from the dais. Harry still staring at the archway was angry at Sirius now for keeping him waiting. But some part of him realized, even as he fought to break free from Lupin, that Sirius had never kept him waiting before. Sirius had risked everything always to see Harry to help him. If Sirius was not reappearing out of that archway when Harry was yelling for him as though his life depended on it. The only possible explanation was that he could not come back. That he really was. <laughs> How will Sirius's death affect Harry? Well, big time, I think. That is really sad. He just got like ask a ban. Mm, I, know. Mm. I know and he was only out for like a year he but he had to hide prison pretty much right right so he never really got freedom that is sad hmm. do you think know. that this is going to draw harry more into more isolation because this book he I seemed he pretty revenge. isolated and pissed yeah i think that's where he's going to come from because you already saw with bellatrix i know it was fresh but hmm. i think it'll put even more like gusto behind it I think you're right. That feels like what would happen, but I don't want it to be that way. But it, currently, I can't see, unless Dumbledore jumps in with some real good mentoring, I can't see Harry handling this in a healthy way. So that's not good. That's what I would do. What's, <laughs> what's not a healthy way? Um, seeking revenge would not so be healthy. healthy um, or just being angry. At so, the world or or Dumbledore for not telling about the prophecy or so what, like, do you, what is like short term look like is he going to duel Dumbledore in the next chapter because he's pissed goodness. at Dumbledore <laughs> I think hmm maybe not the next chapter I don't think it would I don't think that would click yeah oh, maybe maybe it would click like in my head that would be like your secondary reaction the first mm -hmm. thing is Dumbledore came saved us great but then like once he has a little time to process he'll be like wait a second Dumbledore, but Lucius was saying that you knew this prophecy and you never told me. Even all the Death Eaters thought you told me. They already know this stuff. Why yeah. don't I know this stuff? And I think that could then lead to it. If you had told me, I wouldn't have rushed there to go get it. I wouldn't have gotten us in that situation. Um, so I could see him being mad, not to the point of like dueling Dumbledore, I don't think. Um, 
But he's going to see it as his fault because if they weren't Dumbledore's there. Dumbledore's fault? No, no, no. Harry's fault. He's going to think yeah, He's going to think of it as his fault because, because it is he, his fault. Well, yeah, because yeah. if he yeah. wasn't there. Yep. And that's the weird part about this. Like, this legitimately is Harry's fault. Mm-hmm. Dumbledore told him to do something and he didn't do it. And it ended up getting Sirius killed and put everyone else at risk and almost gave a lot Voldemort of got hurt. the weapon, if it, if that's the weapon. Um and we love Harry, and sometimes not we but we know he has his faults, and this is a I pretty mean, big one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you I'm might like, think that. <laughs> yeah, maybe he learned his lesson now. You think he did? Like this is gonna. I hope that'd be great. Like that's what I'm thinking. This would be a turning point. Like whoa, people who love me and have my best interests in mind and want us to beat Voldemort have been giving me advice and I've been ignoring it. I'm not trying hard at school, blah, blah, blah. Like this could be a real big turning point, a reevaluation, but we've never really seen that from Harry. So I have a hard time picturing it. Yeah. But Sirius died now. It's closer Mm -hmm. than Mm. Cedric. And there's trust issues everywhere. Harry doesn't necessarily trust a lot of, Mm. he only trusts really Ron and Hermione, I think. He doesn't, he kind of trusts Dumbledore, but he doesn't at the same point. Hmm. But you almost wish Dumbledore just gave him more information. Like if the, right. if the, the stakes are life and death between, yeah, <laughs> the stakes so are annoying. life and death between these characters, then Dumbledore needs to tell him the exact reasons why he needs to learn Occlumency. Because mm. it, Harry needs to know the stakes. As soon as Harry knows the stakes I for know. anything, why he, he jumps that? into action and does whatever he has to do. Yeah. But if yeah, he doesn't, right. then... He's gonna. He's gonna but still do what he wants to do. All they had to say was like, "Hey, Harry, learn this because mm-hmm. he's gonna try to trick you and get you yep. trapped." Right. Done. I know. I know. So Ugh. annoying. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken much more. Yeah. <sighs> but Probably no one explained it. it to him that way. Right. Lupin, Sirius. None. Why didn't any of them? And Harry's initial like. Why didn't even Snape? Discussions. Yeah, nobody ever no like said. No one explained anything. I know. And it feels like they did know. Yeah. But did they think, like we were kind of thinking it was a bit of an accident? Like, ooh, Harry's getting like a view into what Voldemort is up to. He can be a spy. Mm. Um, but it was not that. It was never that. Now we are seeing it was never that. And nobody told him. Hmm. But they did tell him. Practice, 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 do these lessons with Snape. And he didn't. And then Harry's retaliation for this, too, is chasing Bella up the elevator and then trying to cast a Cruciatus curse (laughs) on her, which you guys had a pretty visible reaction when that happened in the the, the (laughs) book. Really? You guys were both very shocked. Danny was like, whoa, what? (laughs) Jen, I think you just did like a little little double take like that. I know you were watching. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just watched you. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> you guys were my sense. cues on what was happening in the book. You guys went like this, and I was like, "Oh, Harry just cast the Christian yeah. curse." <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what do you think of Harry doing an unforgivable curse? <laughs> I couldn't see myself doing that. Too. <laughs> I was going to say, is it bad yeah. to say it's like an appropriate response? Yeah. It does kind of feel like it. And it wouldn't work because I don't really, really mean right. it, but I want Well, that's it what's to be. so weird. And yeah. that is kind of satisfying, right? Yeah. It's like he thought he was angry enough mm-hmm. to want to do it, but then he actually wasn't. I'm like, yeah, that kind of actually tracks. Or mm-hmm. was it that? Or does he just not know quite the right way to do it? Maybe he was angry enough, but just didn't know how to channel it. I don't it, know. Maybe it is like a different type of anger as well. Like, yes, he's mad at Bellatrix, but... I think the grief like, overwhelming it. It's not anger directed at, toward the right thing, maybe. Mm. Well, in the core of his heart, I think he doesn't mm. believe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't believe that he is like that. Mm-hmm. Bellatrix, yeah. She's <laughs> evil. Insane and evil. Mm. Yeah, reincarnated. But yep. Yeah, I think that's actually really good. I don't think that's really who the character of who Harry is. He actually lacks the ability to be able to torture someone like that. How long was she in jail for, Bellatrix? Long time. But the same as Sirius? Mm. Before, right? Actually, pr- probably pretty similar to Sirius. Yeah, probably around mm-hmm. the same time. Because was it was that, after 13? Voldemort was gone. Probably 11, like 13? 15 years, 16 15. years right now. 
So to me, I'm like, how are you still this good? You've she been didn't locked get rusty. up. Yeah. You would get rusty no matter an athlete, whatever. Sure. You get yeah. rusty. Yeah. This isn't real. Mm. <laughs> That's actually no a, great, want, yeah. a great point. Why are they so good and they're just out of jail? I mean, she's she's been out of jail for a few months now. Months? I thought it was weeks. Maybe it was weeks because he had the... I don't know. You over, guys are the numbers guys. I forgot <laughs> where he had no. the overbounding joy. Yeah. And then it came out in the profit the next day that there was a mass breakout wasn't that umbridge i think when he was getting punished yeah and that was like the first or second so i think there was third. a third yeah, uh, maybe, maybe you're right maybe it is a few months but still a few months that's that's not a ton of time right. to practice your stuff again but maybe it's like learning how to ride a bike once you learn you know no, <laughs> once you learn cruciatus, the cruciatus <laughs> or it's just so a that, sign of how good she was before she went to jail too. yeah for sure and this again, I think there are some there are some place. curses that like you have to constantly practice. Like it is learning how to ride a bike. Like once you know Lumos, you know Lumos. You figure it mm. out. But there's other curses like Cruciatus curse. I think you need to almost put that into practice. And to me, that's more of a mental state. <laughs> she doesn't need practice. Which she, I was going to say, her yeah. practice yeah, is literally so. every day when she's stewing in prison, right. oh, yeah. mad at but the whole I world. I thought that they... Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you'd go like crazy in Azkaban. That's why I, I just don't understand the whole. Because I thought in Azkaban, you're just like constantly going insane because of all the thoughts or the mm. situation you're in. Yeah. Or maybe she thrives in that situation. Because they're taking away your happiness at the same point, the Dementors. So all your ha- you, all, you have left. So are- her happiness is killing people. So wouldn't they be taking that away? Yeah, I, that's a great question. Mm. Is that... What, but is that happiness? Is that what where she derives happiness and joy? It seems like it. Kind of see, yeah. Like, so then would she be bombarded with fluffy butterflies <laughs> and like yeah. while she's an And that's man. why she's angry. Even I don't know. More. I'm just throwing that mm. out there. Like she seems like the opposite. I'm also wondering if if the Dementors had any kind of deal with Voldemort. Like if they were really doing the same equivalent torture <laughs> for everyone, or if they were giving some Death Eaters a break. Mm. Again, this is when Voldemort pops in. Potter, I'm going to give you one chance, Shadow Bellatrix. Give me the prophecy. Roll it out toward me now, and I may spare your life. Well, you're going to have to kill me because it's gone, Harry roared. <laughs> and as he shouted it, pain seared across his forehead. His scar was on fire, and he felt a surge of fury that was quite unconnected with his own rage. And he knows. And he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have my book open. I love that. <laughs> nice, Jed. <laughs> wow. so I could cast Expecto Patronum right now. <laughs> and he knows I'm definitely today. definitely an audio with a, <laughs> with a mad laugh to match Bellatrix's own. Your dear old mate Voldemort knows it's gone. He's not going to be happy with you, is he? What? What do you mean, she cried. And for the first time, there was fear in her voice. Don't waste your breath, yelled Harry. His eyes screwed up. Against the pain in a scar, now more terrible than ever. He can't hear you from here. Can't I, Potter? Said a high, cold voice. <laughs> How good of an entrance is that? There are so many good entrances right here. Yeah, but you know what was crazy? I thought that he was on the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that I thought great. somehow they morphed together. And I was like, no wonder she was so good. That is what I thought. So I know it's weird. Does it happen if if uh, he goes onto the back of like a woman's <laughs> head? Is is there going to be like a baby that's born out of this with like Ew. equal powers Whoa. of Voldemort now? <laughs> I Voldemort wasn't going babies. there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to the fan theories right now. Maybe Voldemort uh, is in the back of a uh, of a uh, Bellatrix's head. <laughs> I thought somehow they like morphed into one. Mm. And that's how he got into Can the ministry. Can you imagine that? Whatever, yeah. She like puts these. her hair up in a bun. Wow. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> Never know. Hmm. And he has hair finally. <laughs> 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 he looks good bald though. <laughs> Jen's like, don't change a thing. You look fine. <laughs> you look it. Voldemort, Those you look slits. great. <laughs> <laughs> you look good, baby. Uh. <laughs> He does. <laughs> and it's like an unexpected one, right? You did not expect him to come back. So it's like, got the chill. Like I, but the I chill still didn't think you... he was actually there. I thought it was like a voice. You know how Harry's yeah, so in yeah, tune yeah. with yep. him? So I didn't really process that he was physically there. Yeah. I thought somehow mm-hmm. 
He was like, yeah, I'm watching this from your brain, mm. your eyes. And Dumbledore steps in. It was foolish to come here tonight, Tom, said Dumbledore calmly. I love that he says that. <laughs> the auras are on their way, by which time I, should, I shall be gone, and you will be dead, spat Voldemort. How good are these? Oh, Dumbledore's line right there is hmm. perfect. Yeah. So good. It was hard for me to picture this whole scene, though, like the fountain coming to mm. life and like all the moving parts. So I think I got distracted with that. Yeah, there was a like, lot was going just, on. Yeah. yeah. And that's why you're distracted because you're at Harry's level of, of magic. And this is a magic yeah. that you have not seen. Mm. You haven't seen anybody do any of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Dumbledore seems like he's juggling five things at once. He's protecting Harry. He's putting these things into motion. He's battling Voldemort. He's making sure Bellatrix <laughs> is kept at bay. He's like doing a ton of stuff right now. And mm -hmm. Voldemort is only battling him. And That's there's, true. Yeah. yeah. There's, I didn't even process that. And there's either. moments that um, Dumbledore actually has fear in his voice. Like Harry can sense it. He has like fear actually in his voice, which is scary if you're Harry. Scary Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but I love when they're just like talking and Harry's like, this, 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 I'm going to read a long section to you guys because I have so many questions on just this section alone. But here it is. Dumbledore flicked his own wand. The force of the spell that emanated from it was, su was such that Harry, though shielded by his golden guard, felt his hair stand on end as it passed. And this time, Voldemort was forced to conjure a silver uh, shining shield out of thin air to deflect, to deflect it. The spell, whatever it was, caused no visible damage to the shield, though a deep gong-like note reverberated from it. An oddly chilling sound. You do not seek to kill me, Dumbledore, cried Voldemort. His scarlet eyes narrowed over the top of his shield. Above such brutality, are you? We both know that there are other ways of destroying a man, Tom, Dumbledore said calmly, continuing to walk toward Voldemort as though he had not a fear in the world, as though nothing had happened to interrupt his stroll up the hall. Merely taking your life would not satisfy me, I admit. There is nothing worse than death, Dumbledore snarled Voldemort. You are quite wrong, said Dumbledore, still closing in upon Voldemort and speaking as lightly as though they were discussing the matter over drinks. <laughs> Harry felt scared to see him walking along, undefended, shieldless. He wanted to cry out a warning, but his head, headless guard kept shunning him backwards toward the wall, blocking his every attempt to get out from behind it. Indeed, your failure to understand that there are, much, there are things much worse than death has always been your greatest weakness. All right, the first question I have for you here. What spell did Dumbledore do in this moment? <laughs> Not that you guys like, because uh, hmm. I'm confused by this. Like something worse than death. Well, no. Potentially? I kind of. Or something that would do destroy a man more. No, so even before this line. So Dumbledore, oh, okay. it says Dumbledore flicked his own wand. He just yeah. flicked it. The force of the spell that emanated from it was, was such that Harry, though shielded by his golden guard, felt his hair stand on end as it passed. And this time, Voldemort <laughs> was forced to conjure a, sil a silver, or a, a shining silver shield out of thin air to deflect it. The spell, whatever it was, caused no visible damage to the shield, though a deep gong-like note reverberated from it, an oddly chilling sound. And so, that's when they have the conversation about killing. Yeah, so Voldemort thought it was going to be killing. Yeah. But something about the way his shield protected yep. him or the gong sound... Voldemort knew it was not a killing curse or the color of it or whatever it was. Yeah. He knew that Dumbledore was not trying to kill him. But I still am curious, like, what was it? It was powerful. It was big. And I'm also thinking, is this a game of chess where if Voldemort expects it to be a killing curse and puts up a certain type of shield, mm -hmm. it might bounce a killing curse back. So Dumbledore expecting that doesn't use a killing curse hoping that the shield wouldn't protect him you know i'm thinking are they thinking at that level where they're trying to throw curveballs unexpected curses and they're not even having to say words they're just flicking their wands i know it's kind of crazy oh also um yours said a uh, golden Was guard and ours is stone guard oh really yeah oh. uh small difference interesting. but interesting that is interesting I assume yours is, is the same. <laughs> yep, I'm reading it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, it is, we have the same copies, so yeah, I'm sure. But but do you think this spell was like 
something ordinary that just Harry hasn't encountered yet? Or is Dumbledore even inventing new magic here that like even Voldemort is surprised about? Because I think Voldemort would probably know that Dumbledore doesn't, I don't know, is, is, does Voldemort know that Dumbledore maybe doesn't want to kill him in this moment? Like why doesn't Dumbledore actually want to kill him in this moment? Why is he casting spells that are non-killing spells? Mm. And because what the heck is this spell? Because it's attached to Harry, that's why. He can't kill him. Like it would kill I Harry think, if he yeah, kills Voldemort maybe? Somehow. That is certainly possible. Because then Harry's ha- hair stood up. Was that just because of that? Or was that because Voldemort, I don't know. I think it's a connection thing. Hmm. Dang. So Voldemort knows, or Dumbledore knows if he kills Voldemort at this moment, Harry would drop dead. Maybe. I don't know. It's just one theory. Maybe that's why. Hmm. Or maybe he just knows he's older and wiser. So maybe something, you know, like the Sorcerer's Stone was like eternal life. And like he knows that, hey, death isn't so bad. Like there's other things Mm. I've seen that are worse than death. So I play with those two Mm. theories. Like I wonder if Dumbledore would kill people. I feel like like is it just a Voldemort thing? I can't see him killing has he i have killed? a hard time seeing it too i feel like it's like justice like he wouldn't kill but he would set it up where you would be mm. a lifetime in prison or he just takes your brains out <laughs> you're alive but you can't do anything <laughs> sit in the jar <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. what or he's a science experiment. <laughs> Maybe they want Voldemort to dissect him and be like, what actually happened with you and Harry? Hmm. Let's we... take your brain out. <coughs> you muggle-born. Yeah. Why exactly would... <laughs> he's casting even worse insults, I don't know. Why would Dumbledore not be satisfied with taking his life, though? It's not even that he just doesn't want to kill him. Hmm. Dumbledore wouldn't be satisfied taking... No, because I don't think he would actually, I don't know. I can't picture Voldemort like wanting, I mean, sorry, (laughs) Dumbledore wanting to kill anyone Mm. because I think he just wants like, mm, I want to say like the best for everyone or like feels like they have a second chance. Like he always Mm. gives second chances. Voldemort is a different story kind of, but... um, what does death do, like, to that person? They're not suffering or anything. They're just gone. Yeah. Mm. I feel like not, like, he likes to teach lessons. So, like, whatever that could be mm. for. I'm I'm death. also wondering if there's something more, like, um, when Harry and Voldemort were fighting, the Priori and Cantatum, I think, is what did the making the past spells kind of go backwards and it was like undoing what he did i'm wondering if there's more of that like undoing Mm -hmm. some of the damage that voldemort has done is there something more that dumbledore wants to be able to not just kill him and leave things the way they are but actually undo some of the evil Mm -hmm. that he's done Hmm. in the world or whatever um but maybe he needs to kind of be alive to do that um or there's got to be something more to it it's not just as simple as killing him it wouldn't satisfy him. Hmm. Or it could be as simple as that's just too easy. Maybe Dumbledore is a little darker. He's like, <laughs> I want to torture you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cruciate you first. Interesting. These are, It's interesting character studies on all these people. Get What is... I think we have one of their fears right here. But if you're if we're talking about Harry, Dumbledore, and Voldemort, what are all three of their greatest fears? What do they fear most in the world? Harry is letting people down, or mm. I think that would be his. Yeah, seems like a good one. Mm. Voldemort not living eternally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dumbledore, I don't know. Dumbledore's still a bit of a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. How? So here's another interesting one. Is um, Voldemort seems like he's on the quest to gain immortality. How is he going to gain immortality? (laughs) 
I love your questions. They're great. <laughs> There has to be. I'm thinking there's like secrets of the the Department of Mysteries exists. There's other secrets that mm. are out there that he's trying to com- collect, combine. Do you think the weapon had anything to do with that? What Did is he the need weapon? this? I don't even know what the weapon was. What, yeah, like what prophecy could Trelawney be making that would, that was the weapon that would influence if it was the weapon <clears throat> that would influence his ability to live forever. How would you live forever? But he already did live forever through this other stuff that he was like through like all his, these different snakes, those little pieces of him. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, so if you. There's other ways. I'm, I guess. Like his journal and stuff. Like. Yeah. Like he's. You can created. have little pieces of yourself almost. You, you got write a big journal or even what I'm kind of hoping is happening with Sirius right now. It's not a part of himself, but like. If you have a portrait that you've spent hours with for however long, it becomes a piece of you in a weird way. But I, I feel he like did Voldemort that while wants he was more. Like locked up in his house, that would have been great. That Wait, would be. locked up in his house? Like if if Sirius made a portrait of himself uh, just to talk to for a long time, tell like a picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> yep. Um, what? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, Sounds all familiar, but I don't know. So. <laughs> Like Wait, is he the one that killed? No, never mind. <laughs> no, this is this nothing is in Harry thing. Potter. No, I know. Yeah. Um. But not long so, years. are you talking there? He's able to put parts of him into different objects. Well, like just the, not not like necessarily an actual part of him, but like um, his journal was at least a memory. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's possible, and knowledge can be put into like portraits. Um, maybe a piece of him went into Harry. So it, your essence is a little bit more than just, uh, what we're used to in our muggle world. Mm. <laughs> so I just don't know like what that has to do with things. Like part of him can just move into Quirrell's head yeah. or like into weird creatures or worm things. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. It just feels weird. Like if he can be like that and then restored, Maybe he can reverse that or clone himself. Um, so or just like whenever he dies, forever. he just like, I, like, I think of that as being the reason he was killing people, like absorbing their life a little bit. Mm. So if he can just continuously farm other wizards, absorb their <laughs> life, he could maybe live forever that way. That doesn't make it entirely sense. Yeah, like I don't because know. Because mm. when he have killed more people. Mm. Maybe. It would have been like a massacre. But maybe it's got to be slow and steady, you know, like you have to eat every day. You can't just eat like, <laughs> uh, you know, 10 meals in one day and be good for a week. So maybe he's just got to have a slow and steady diet of now. wizards. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, I don't know. Um, but then also maybe that is just so obnoxious. That wouldn't make any sense. Or whenever he's about to die, his body starts aging. He doesn't look sexy anymore. He's like, I got to find a new wizard to take over. <laughs> Uh-oh, and then Jeff he can just look sexy anymore. That's According not possible. to you, <laughs> it's not possible. He's locked in. He's got his snake features. Um, he's got gills. He's got gills. Now he's got gills. I mean, <laughs> what? Wow. The? Like he's a we now we know what Jen's into. <laughs> snakefish, yeah. apparently. Bald, gilled people. No, they have with the, slits the for noses for like their ears, right? Snakes. Ah, that's what I was. That sounds right. <laughs> sounds right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's an eel, not a yeah. snake. <laughs> oh, you, you messed up the whole time. He Girl, really you needs got to go strange eels. tastes. <laughs> 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 What's the actor's name? That's what I like. Ralph. What's his name? Animal. Oh, Real. yeah. Real. <laughs> Real That's <fun>. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what animal wild. do you want to be? It's been a hot minute since we brought up his name. <laughs> I know. Mm. Um. <laughs> At least I don't want to be a fly for an animagus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Catch <Gotcha>. it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, line. Jen, what's happening? How's he going to do it? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what you're saying now. Um, how's Waldemort going to live forever? At you through my eyes. Uh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> how will, how he will has Voldemort other ways. Like, this couldn't have been his only way. He's got backups? Yeah, but what are the backups? That's I don't when, know. I'm not that smart. Like, Flash drives. <laughs> He's got these time travelers that were destroyed, okay? Mm. That was backup number two. So what's three? He goes into the archway. 
I guess his, his plan he A and was... He inserts all the brains from the tank into his head. <laughs> Five, he goes into space and he eats all the planets and then... Oh my gosh, that's where Pluto is. Space. Is that what happened to Pluto? He ate Pluto? <laughs> he actually ate it. Oh so all those rooms he uses. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Jen, cool. make one up. What's one of the unknown ones? I want to hear this. <laughs> he goes into the love room. Oh the no. The love room. <laughs> Oh, With all going. his snakes, <laughs> all those anacondas, watch out! Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They're snakes. They're big snakes. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh my god! Classic, Kristen. Wow, oh. First time I read that. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what another room. What was another room? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think Jim. I got them all. <laughs> um, okay, another line. He was gone from the hall. He was locked in the coils of a creature with red eyes, so tightly bound that Harry did not know where his body ended and where I'm the creatures began. <laughs> this is Baby exactly what Jen is describing. <laughs> I can't. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, I totally ruined your perfectly eloquently read uh, <laughs> No, it's perfect. Chapter. It's a perfect segue. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what you were describing in the love room. What's <laughs> 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 happening with Harry right now? Oh, My boy. question is, what is happening here? <laughs> I'm, I, I, I was busy singing. <laughs> Wait, sorry. What, um, just he, a recap He was gone really from quick. the hall. Yeah. So this is as soon as um, like Dumbledore and Voldemort are done dueling yes he possesses harry for a second and it says that he was gone from the hall he was oh, locked yeah. in the coils of a creature with red eyes this is where i got kind of really confused yeah so tightly bound that harry did not know where his body ended and the creatures began they were fused together bound by pain and there was no escape what's happening this is where I was like the connection between Harry and Voldemort. I'm like, if he's is he really feeling like everything that's being done to Voldemort? That's what I was mm. getting. But then this whole creature thing, I'm like, is it a snake? Is it what's her name? That snake with the name? Nagini. Um, yeah. Mm. But then it sounded like it was a creature that Dumbledore sent to like eat Voldemort. Mm. So now I don't know. To eat Voldemort? Wow, that's a curveball. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I like it. Pretty insane. Oh, uh, yeah. Phoenix. I mean, what's her name? The Phoenix? Yeah. Came to the rescue. That yeah. was really cool, too. What did she do? I know it was something cool. I think intercepted a, an attack Oh, she from ate Baltimore. one of the spells. Mm. And then was wait, on wait, the wait. ground. Fox. She, Fox, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is Fox a girl? I like girls because they're great. <laughs> <laughs> and they do everything right. Wait, time out. I'm second guessing myself on this. I always thought Fox was a male phoenix. How dare you? Am I wrong about that? Yeah. I always thought it was a guy. Am I wrong but to assume I, the gender? I, I never like knew. It's he. not distinct. Of course you would like, think it's a guy, but it's I a girl. I never assigned it a gender. I'll just... I'm pretty sure <laughs> it is a guy. Why would they, it be a guy? I think Dumbledore has said he, but I might have just been sexistly oh, that's he's gay? Is that it. what you're saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dumbledore's gay. <laughs> <laughs> not with Fox. No. Oh, no. no. I'm so confused. I always thought that. I thought there were uh, <laughs> like Fox was referred to as him. But I always in thought, certain sections. I thought so too. Like he only gives a feather. Yeah. However, it says like, he. It says okay. he. He burst into flame and fell Phew. to the floor. That Sorry, was Jen. a close one. I know. I like a girl better. You can, well, maybe yeah, we'll see a girl yeah. phoenix it's like at some very, point, like, you know? Feminine features. Yeah, for sure. Some guys but do. Respect. A lot of birds I'm in the just, aviary world. Oh, the males so true. are a little bit more beautiful than the females. Yeah, true. That's whatever. True. <laughs> you ever seen the cardinal? I hope you get eaten first. <laughs> or a peacock. <laughs> peacock, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the bird of paradise. Mm. Cardinals. The bird whatever. of paradise is whew, those males. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, but what really is happening here? Jen's got this theory, <laughs> but what, Dan, you got any theories here? He was gone yeah, from the hall. Away. He was locked in the coils um, of a creature with red eyes. No. In <laughs> not really, not any actual theories, but it feels like we're just getting a peek at like 
the spiritual connection between mm. these two. Like this is this is in the spirit world almost. Yeah. This this is not earthly. Like Harry is somewhere else. Like time has stopped at this moment. Almost. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This feels like if if someone was standing next to them, they wouldn't have seen this all happen. This is mm. just like all in Harry's mind or like some other dimension. Like this felt really bizarre. Like almost like this dark creature with the red eyes is who Voldemort's this is like Voldemort's soul, like mm. who he actually is. This is like what was taking over other creatures while he was just trying to survive. It's like the core of him that was the only part left yeah. when he was destroyed by Harry the first time. Um, but this also kind of is confirming something like he says, kill me, Dumbledore. And then like talking about kill the boy um, if death is nothing. So it feels like this confirms the connection. Um, mm. Let him kill us is what Harry is thinking about this situation. Like even Harry knows that they're like one in the same kind of. Yeah. So it's some kind of possession. It feels like. Right? Yeah. It, it feels pretty, pretty connected. Um, and I don't know if it's possible to disconnect them. Mm. They are fused. Conjoined twins. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's, it's creepy. It's weird. There is uh, just such a tragic line here, too, where Voldemort, you know, like this little moment happens where um, I think Voldemort says, Dumbledore, kill me. Like, you have a chance to kill me now. Mm -hmm. And Harry, this is Harry's line. Let the pain stop, thought Harry. Let him kill us. <laughs> End it, Dumbledore. Death is nothing compared to this. And I'll see Sirius again. Hmm. <laughs> but you guys don't like Sirius. So. Oh my god! <laughs> this is going to be I'm our tagline for this episode. Guys, yeah, forever <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing. <laughs> it's weird that then Harry's emotion seems to be the very thing that caused the creature to like loosen its coils. Yeah. I'm like, well, that shows the fundamental difference between Harry and this creature, which I'm mm. saying Voldemort. You know, like that Harry's emotion doesn't, it doesn't like work. That doesn't mesh with what the creature is trying to accomplish. What Voldemort is like latching onto is like mm. fear and pain. And then and Harry latching onto love. A heart filled with emotion mm. causes the pain to go away and the creature's coils to loosen. So, But that's also that's how good. he was saved with his mom, right? Love. Yeah. Mm. Love is the answer. That's such a great point too because... Well, even when we were discussing the Bellatrix stuff with uh, why she experiences joy for certain things, I feel like the base of what their things are, like Harry and Voldemort seem very angry, equally angry in this moment, but their anger mm. is directed toward different things. Harry's anger, the source of it is he loves someone who he lost and he's angry about that. And then Voldemort just is angry because everything's not according to his plan. He's a little snooty boy. Mm, this yeah. is all inward and about yeah. him. Yeah. Harry's is more directed outwardly. Yeah. That Which is beautiful. Sense. That's like yeah. Harry, the essence of who he is, is he loves people well. Sometimes. He doesn't really know how to express it. He's still like a teenager, but he really loved. He's learning. He really loves Sirius. Mm -hmm. It's devastating to see him this hurt. And this is yeah, this is why the coils loosen at the moment because his experiences, he'll see Sirius again, and then it's almost like the creature doesn't want to like touch him anymore after this, so he like recoils. Interesting. But if he mm -hmm. practices Occlumency, would he have been able to be this creature on him? Hmm. Hmm. Like it's more of a mental thing. I wonder and if he could block it out better. There yeah. would be less of a connection. I'm Certainly could be. He needs like spark notes on the. Mm. Yeah. He can't do the full class. <laughs> I know. Can't do the private tutoring. <laughs> spark but. notes it is. No, oh, because he makes fun of Snape. Mm. And now if he does the lessons with Snape, he's going to want to see all of his memories with Sirius and his dad. Mm, I know. When they're teenagers. Well, if he gets good enough, he can see those memories. He, oh, God. Kind of. He'd have to battle Snape opposite, for him. the though. Oh, but Snape's hiding a lot of the memories anyway, yeah. so it wouldn't matter. And you probably don't want to see it. But yeah, if he gets good enough, he could try and talk to other people. Who else does he know that knows them? But other that's the opposite of occlumency. What's the... Le legilimency. Oh. Yeah, legilimency, yeah. 
Hmm. How much do you guys hate fudge? <laughs> not as much as Bellatrix, but I definitely do not like fudge. But I don't know. At least he listened to Dumbledore and didn't put up a fight. Yeah. But there um, was a moment where he was like, they were like even saying he was had a half wit about him to say seize the seize. Yep. Him. He's just like, annoying. After yeah. all this, he seriously is going to still think about that? There is... I mean, we're going to talk about your guys' predictions, but Danny, you did predict this a while ago. what I said? So at the end of this book, you were like, there's got to be some way... I think the beginning of this book, you were like, Voldemort, I think he's going to be in the background of this whole book, and then at the end, they're going to have some kind of duel, and the Ministry is actually going to see Dumbledore like this rise is to the power, reveal. and at the end, this is going to be the reveal. Mm. And this is kind of what happens like like the ministry people start coming back and they all see Voldemort and Bellatrix there and then it's like the news is broken so I guess the question mm. is what happens from here <laughs> does Fudge still Oof. have a job is he still going to become the minister of magic does do what are they what's the course of action let's all put ourselves in the ministry of magic shoes we're ministry <laughs> ah. workers we're on what the we wizen do? gamut. Well, Dumbledore's <laughs> been saying this from the get-go, so I would mm-hmm. think you'd want to follow what he's saying, but mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think he has to be the head of it. Yeah, and okay. he probably can't because he originally had to choose between Minister of Magic and Head of Hogwarts, so he's going to be the headmaster, hopefully, instead. Right. But if they wanted him to become Minister of Magic, do then, you think that he would take it? He, he, he could do either one that he wanted. Oh, yeah. I think, I think he could, but... Would he want to? I don't think he would. I think he'd want to be closer to Harry Mm. for the same reasons he didn't choose it the first time. Maybe. Mm. Wait, could he have known about this the first time? Or maybe Maybe. he was... Oh. But times are pretty insane. But he could also (laughs) just do it temporarily. Yeah. And let McGonagall run the school. Yeah. But they all do listen to Dumbledore immediately in this. You're right. Dumbledore's like, I'm going to give you 30 minutes, remove Umbridge... Um, oh, yeah, that was let good. Uh, Hagrid come back. He's setting things in order for his school. Mm. And I love to, I, you guys love this moment when we were doing the live read, when he's like, if you <laughs> want to reach out to me in any other way, you know my address, just send an owl to Hogwarts. I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> to the headmaster's office. Yeah. Headmaster's <laughs> office, exactly. <laughs> I was like, like yeah. Yeah. get him. Yeah. Like Jeez. that is how he says I'm the headmaster yeah. again. <laughs> oh, so great. <laughs> so good. So good. Like he doesn't even have to say it. He just says it in that. He knows it. Oh, so good. Um, But yeah, I guess I kind of even forgot about that. Like that confirms he's going back to Hogwarts. That's his plan. He's going to stay there. It almost sounds like he's leaving Fudge in charge, but you're saying put ourselves in their shoes. Like let's say we're, even if we were skeptical and we liked Fudge, this has to put you over the edge. Mm. You'd be like, Dumbledore was right this whole time. And even if you don't time. blame Fudge, you you might be able to see a little bit of something. You don't want him in charge anymore. Do you think possibly there's possible in the next book that there's going to be like a smear campaign where like Fudge is going to still stay in power and he's going to still deny it because he wants to be in power for something? I do how think he wants he, to be in power. But how can he cover this up? There's yeah, that, exactly. Other people, people saw it. Yeah, eyewitnesses. I don't think... It's possible, but I don't think he would go with that technique. If he wanted to stay in power, I think he would have to do like a classic PR campaign, like fess up, apologize, mm-hmm. admit you're wrong, win me over. Because honestly, well, only because I've been feeling sorry for Fudge since he was like, it. like that line just got me the end of the last book where he's like p- almost pleading with Dumbledore, like he can't be back. He just can't be like, he's just scared. He's a coward. I don't think he's a good leader. But now I'm like, oh, man, like he really was just afraid. And this confirms all his fears. Could he be a good leader Mm. now that he knows what's actually going on? Mm. Or is he too far gone? Is he too much of a coward? I don't know. I could be convinced. But then (laughs) is is like, well, let's say Umbridge isn't dead. She comes back. Is she involved in things? Could we ever be be boys with Umbridge at this point? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say. Could she, be, mm. could she be part centaur now? Part centaur? <laughs> she fell in love with her captors? <laughs> she turns into a centaur? Like, but, 
<laughs> they put a spell on her. Just like being an animagus, you can do a process to become a centaur in the woods. Wow. What? Your theories tonight are Was that you that said that? Like, what? lack of sleep? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She falls in love with a centaur and, like, No, like, the they whole have, thing. like, their but own type about of magic. Else. And they're like, you know uh, what? You're going to be a half breed now, too. Wow. <laughs> that would be great. Enjoy. I would love it. Hmm. She comes back to Hogwarts. She's a centaur. She's got she's a horse apple. butt. <laughs> or she's a reverse centaur. Reverse centaur. She's got oh my God. Umbridge's butt and she's got Just a, horse a horse head. head. <laughs> yeah, we said he's not obsessed with butts. <laughs> <laughs> Goes full circle. Wow. I I am going to say this. And <laughs> The you next, like horse butts better? I like horse butts. <laughs> no, the he next, likes Umbridge's butt better. Umbridge's <laughs> butt, no shake. way. Which is the least appealing butt in this whole book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel like Grop just moved up in the world, yeah. you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm no. going to say this. There's two more chapters in this book. The next three chapters are incredible chapters. I mean, three. You just said there's two. Because the first of first the next one. In the next one. book. It's so oh, good. Oh, nice. So it just has a little like uh, hmm. sneak peek Teaser. under the next book. The next, the first chapter in the next book is. Woo. It's good. So, Jen, if it wasn't <laughs> Fudge or Dumbledore, who else do we like? Who do we uh, vouch for I'm, to be what? the head minister of magic? I was thinking like one of the orders. Like Kingsley? Tonks. Tonks? Tonks? She's so young. I know. So? Wow. Mm. So what? Hmm. Respect. Um, she could look old. She puts gray hair on. She could She could look like Fudge. We put Fudge away and let her <laughs> run the place. That's true. Um, <laughs> hmm. Mad Eye Moody, but we don't even He's know. He's a what little happened crazy. To him. Yeah. 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 Um, I like my first one. I'm going to stick Honestly, with that. I do, we don't know anyone who's like a good real leader at this Lupin. point. Lupin. Lupin would actually be good, aside yeah. from his uh, his time of the Werewolf. month. <laughs> That's our Tonk step in. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow, it's brilliant. That would so actually be really good cycle. for the ministry to be led by someone mixed blood. Hmm. Yeah, they need to have a little variety in there. Yeah, they do. They really do. Oh, no. People like Umbridge wouldn't exist wait, wait. anymore. What about one of the people who was uh, administering the tests? Um, hmm. Huh. Because those all seem like really cool people, mature, older. Like the lady, yeah. one lady actually gave Dumbledore the test back in the day. So like one of those oh, people, yeah. someone who's mature, older, very, very I feel experienced. Like you nailed it right there. One of those people. Yeah, because like you the always guy. think outside of the box, and I'm like, oh look, Danny's prediction is true. <laughs> well, just because I say so many <laughs> stupid things, at least some of the, you know something sticks. Something <laughs> sticks, but um, <laughs> we'll see. I kind of actually think. Fudge is going to remain. Mm. I feel like that is more likely than some of these other things. And then he's going to be on the hunt to find Umbridge instead of Voldemort, right? Oh, I sure hope not. That'd be <laughs> lame. Um, <laughs> Hold on, time out. Someone is saying something wild in chat. I didn't never knew this fan theory. It's not really a fan theory. It's a fan mythology. Um, <laughs> wow, I know there was so theory. many different, <laughs> different things. Because this one is out there. What's mythology with... Uh, centaurs centaurs in like the mythological world oh, okay. they're known to raid local villages and rape women oh wow and so there's the theory that's that that's what happened to umbridge oh my gosh Whoa. dark Again? theories we're gonna that's dark theories that's here. dark holy oh, smokes <laughs> Kid podcast. <laughs> if any kids are listening, heard, sorry, no, parents. It's a herd. Oh, no. <laughs> I heard something. What's another H? I'm trying to think of a word to rhyme with that. <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? Oh, Never mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you, yes. <laughs> you lost it's either, me. Someone said it's I don't think I'm going to say it out well, loud. Should I? <laughs> someone said it's either a Dementor's kiss or a Centaur's kiss. <laughs> For her, that's what she gets. Oh, God. Oh, oh goodness. Anyway, okay, let's do anything in, oh anything in these chapters that that's you guys uh, saw before we jump into the finals. I don't think so. I'm yeah. still processing. I know. I actually am curious about all the fountain stuff, too. It all happened so fast. Yeah. So just like, what did I miss? Like, did Dumbledore do this to the fountain? Did the fountain just jump in action? Did the fountain owe Harry something for all the money he dumped in? 
like, why was the fountain so ready to just be like, we're your guards now? Um, I still didn't really know yeah. what it was. Yeah. I felt I like Dumbledore me. sent it ahead of himself mm. to protect Harry. Okay. That's what it felt like to me. But yep. yeah. I'm, I'm down. And it was like four different creatures and then some of them were getting like exploded in the battle. Yeah. And then the one was protecting Harry kind of at the most of the battle. Yeah. One was um, keeping Bellatrix down. One was protecting Harry. Oh, he, yes. Yes. Um, another one uh, had took a, the Avada Kedavra curse. And then I think the mm. other one was still just doing some protection at the moment or something. So, mm. OK. Yeah. That was the only but thing. They I was wouldn't not have sure automatically about. done that. It's because Dumbledore. Because Dumbledore yeah. set it up or like right. did a spell. Well, Danny thinks yeah. because he threw some money into the, the I wishing. Mean, he, he paid yeah, for them. Yeah, because he remembers all these little things. <laughs> they saw him and they're like, he gave us some money. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Favorite character, Hot Tamale. Favorite moment. Neville. Oh, Neville. Neville. I Neville. know. I was no. going to say Neville. <laughs> Neville that was too. great. You're yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Now I know why you like him so much. <laughs> Neville. Nice. <laughs> 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 Neville's my hot tamale. Definitely giving Neville my hot tamale mm. award. He's my favorite character. Mm-hmm. Hot I'm, tamale. I'm giving House Cup to Dumbledore, though. Yeah, that's definitely. It was foolish of you to come here tonight, Tom. It's just. That was so good. A whole timeline. Hot tamale? It was hard because a lot of the kids were good too. Mm. They were they had moments, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bellatrix, <laughs> standing against standard. Um, for the hot tamale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm kidding. Obviously, she could eat a hot Bellatrix tamale. Bellatrix is kind of a hot tamale. <laughs> she could eat a hot tamale. <laughs> <laughs> Shove a whole bunch down her mouth. Before the podcast, I was thinking of picking Bellatrix just as like. To be provocative. She Ooh, she nice. <laughs> She's tricksy. Well, I, like be, I beat you to it. Oh no, you went with Neville. <laughs> yeah. But Neville, I'm too Neville I, I like Bellatrix. Too hard, yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. the two opposites. <laughs> Complete two opposites. But yeah, I'm with you, John. I'll give uh Dumbledore House Cup, mm-hmm. Neville Hot Tamale. Favorite moment is tougher. There yeah. were a lot of like cool moments. Yeah. But that's, I think Dumbledore gets the house cup because the moments that were the coolest were like his moments. Yep. I just when can't think of like in, which one. When yeah. he's like putting people on fish hooks. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And says if it was fools for you to come here. Even like the whole duel, how they're like dueling and the things that, how how calm Dumbledore is. Yes. Just all of Dumbledore's moments might As be my favorite moment. he's moments. in a bar or something, yeah. like talking yep. at a bar. Yep. <laughs> and he like was strolling down the hallway like yeah. he wasn't even interrupted by anything. Yeah. I was yep. like, oh. He's the best. Yeah, for real. And we get to see it finally. Kristen didn't go. I agree. (laughs) 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 I need to read for myself next time. I'm trying to think of a good moment of calm in these chapters that you can experience. But there wasn't a too too many moments of like friendship. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I guess when they all met yours is when they all met back together. When the three the two groups split <laughs> off, like, and yes. then Harry, uh, Neville, and Hermione met up with Ron, Ginny, and Nuval, Nuval. Luna. <laughs> Did he just slip? I don't know. No. I mean, he's doing better than me because I'm not even speaking. I mean, we're even saying that uh, Neville and Luna would be a great combo. I feel like <laughs> that's they, what you just they'd did. Well In well. my mind, that's my headcanon. So I like it. That's um, their nickname. Thank you. Like, like Benninger or <laughs> Jenna <laughs> Ben Nuna. or what is Nuna? Nuna? What was it? Benifer. That's what it was. Benifer, yeah. Oh. It's like a Neville Luna. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, when they meet up, that's it. all cute when they're like, hey, uh, Ron's kind of drunk. Mm. Luna's explaining things. Oh, yeah. I did like a the laughing gas. Yeah. yeah. Asio brain. Yeah. Or yes. Or brain, whatever <laughs> it is. It is a great moment. <laughs> Thank you. I like that moment. Gotcha. <laughs> did you guys, Jen, did you get your favorite moment? <laughs> I just said it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey Hill Brain, that's your favorite moment. <laughs> hey, yep. She likes all the, the moments room. with Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> She's hot. over there like fanning herself. Voldemort <laughs> is hot tamale. Hot tamale every time. I was almost going to say that because I thought I'd get a kick out <laughs> We got Voldemort over here, Bellatrix over here. <laughs> yeah. Spicy. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's a hot tamale right mm-hmm. there. I'll do the baby head Death Eater. There you go. <laughs> well, that's now great. we know what you're into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> Muscle heads. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. The big <laughs> That was such a good moment, too. That was so funny. Hermione goes, you can't attack a baby. You're like, Hermione, shut up. Yeah, I feel like that's something I would say. Yeah. You can't attack a baby. Uh, oh, anyway. That was good. Thanks for joining us on our journey of Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. <laughs> oh, boy. Until next time. Get us out of here. <laughs> and we are all delirious. Yeah, tired, we're right? going crazy. I'm saying crazy stuff. One. Now you guys can finish the book. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow, this is Sleep exciting. Took three months. Three months. Oh, we can finish it now for three months. <laughs> <laughs> oh.